In this session, we want to discuss about sharing stresses in beams. Let's do a quick review of what we have discussed about shear so far. Shear stresses arise from shear forces that are parallel to the cross-section of a body. I want to show you this with an example. I like French baguette. French baguette is very tasty and let me grab one. If I want a slice of this bread, I take a knife, hold the bread with one hand and then I'm going to apply shear force along the vertical plane using this hand. Take a look at the free body diagram of this scenario. The force applied by my hand to hold the bread in place and the force applied by the knife are shown. Notice the shear plane in between the forces. As I slice this bread, the shear force is applied parallel to this cross section. This shear force pushes one part of the bread in one direction and the other part of the bread in the opposite direction. This causes one surface to slide with respect to other and the body shears. This is exactly what happens when you use a scissor to cut a piece of cardboard. In both cases, you are applying shear forces parallel to the cross section, creating shear stress which breaks the parts into two. Average shear stress is equal to shear force over area. But you know the average shear stress equation is not accurate. For example, the shear stress at the top or the bottom of the body is equal to zero. You know this because there is no cross-sectional area right above the top or the bottom. So there is no shear at these locations. But the equation indicates the stress is uniform from top to bottom. In reality, the shearing stress changes from zero from the top or bottom to a maximum value at the neutral axis. So in this session, we want to have a better understanding of what happens when shear force is applied and develop a method for calculating the shear stress in a beam. As you know, transverse forces are loads that are applied perpendicular to the axis of the beam. Beams are typically subjected to shear and bending. Pure bending causes deflection without sliding, but transverse shear causes sliding of surfaces not in just one plane but also in a perpendicular plane. In order for you to visually see this, I want to show you a demonstration. I have a few balsa wood pieces with me. I want to make sure their edges are fully aligned. I'm going to hold them together and apply a transverse force. As you can see, this causes bending, but you can also see that the pieces of balsa wood slide relative to each other. Take a closer look at how the edges are out of alignment. This means that each balsa wood piece is experiencing shear stress in the longitudinal direction. This shows that the transverse force I apply not only creates shear stress along the vertical plane but also along the longitudinal plane. While this experiment shows that there is sliding in horizontal longitudinal direction, you won't see this physically in a homogeneous beam made of steel. Even though you don't see physical sliding in steel, the tendency to slide exists between the surfaces. So shearing stresses occur in vertical transverse plane as well as on the horizontal longitudinal plane. However, in materials such as wood, you can see the effect of the shear in longitudinal direction. This picture shows wood splitting along the longitudinal axis. So our goal today is to develop a method to calculate the shear stress in beams when subjected to transverse loads. Let's get started.